Hi, welcome to RCTV. We're here with Sarah Armstrong Montoya, who's the President and Chief Executive Officer at Cordoba Minerals. Thank you for joining us today. Thanks, Taylor. It's been a while, but finally, welcome back to an in-person PDAC. For those of you new to the story, Cordoba Minerals is a Vancouver-based mineral exploration and development company that's focused on its 20,000 hectare land package at the San Matias Project in Cordoba, Colombia, and its Perseverance Copper Project in Arizona. So let's get some general questions underway here. What are you most excited to see or do at PDAC 2022? Look, I think as you just said, Taylor, it's pretty exciting to be back here in person after two and a quarter years. Um, I think that, you know, we all we all did Zoom because we absolutely have to and and, and, and it was necessary during the pandemic to but to be back here in person and, and having those relationships and face to face time with people again I think has just been fantastic and be able to picking up where we left off pre pandemic. Great, yeah. Uh, so for those who don't know you or Cordoba, what do you want new investors to know right away? Um, we have a lot of upside and a lot of potential. We just announced a pre-feasibility study on our San Matias project in uh, in Colombia. Um, we've got two projects. Uh, both we're, we're, we're part of a group that really focuses on copper first, copper second and copper third. Um, so so all, all about copper. Um, both our projects are copper. Uh, and in Colombia we have a 70% copper, 27% gold and 3% uh, silver, silver project. And this is a project that is that is economical. It's it's viable, and it's something that we can realistically have into production in about four years. Which, in terms of mining, where you're normally looking at sort of the 10 to 15 year timeline, um, that's that's quite exciting for us. Great. Okay. So let's take a step back a little bit and talk about your background. How did you get started in this industry? Well, um, I'm a I'm a lawyer by background, um, and I started off with some big law firms and sort of focusing on uh, on the mining sector, on corporate and mining sector, and um, jumped over to in-house. Um, and I've been with with Robert Friedland and that group since uh, 2010, um, mostly in legal positions up until uh, up until last year when uh, I was promoted to to CEO. So I had a lot of time in uh, in Asia and relocated to Medellin in, in Latin America in 2016. Great, great. Okay, so how would you describe the industry now compared to when you first started? I think we've seen a lot of um, a lot of progress, in particular for women in mining. Um, that you know, we we we're still got a ways to go, but I think there's been a, a huge amount of uh, sort of improvement um, in that area. Um, I think that um, I mean the mining industry has always been exciting to me. I've always I've always really liked it. Um, I've always sort of specialised in in emerging markets, and most of our projects have been in those markets. And um, I think most of the time we're in situations where those those markets understand if they want into an international investment and international money, they need to adhere to sort of those international standards. And one of the biggest changes I think that we've seen is we're now going towards greener projects. And I think we're going to go in the direction of where the greener your project, you, you're probably even going to get a better price for your for your commodity. So we've got such a huge ESG focus now, um, which is probably the biggest change I've seen in the last 15 years. And I think it's extremely important. Everybody gets that you know, without the without the communities and that environmental focus and that social work, there really is no 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 project. And so that that's probably what I think is the the, the biggest change that I've seen. Great. Okay. So let's uh, dive into the Cordoba story a little bit. Uh, maybe could you give us an intro to the San Matias project with respect to location, infrastructure, sure. and a bit of the history? So we are actually in the Cordoba region um, in Colombia. We have uh, we've got the San Matias project, which actually consists of four four deposits. It's Alacrans, um, Alacran, Montiel East, Montiel West, and and Costa Azul. But as you mentioned in your in your intro, we've locked up a huge land package in Colombia. We've got about 900 kilometers. Um, under application, we've got 146 kilometres of granted concessions there. This is a it is a copper project. Um, we initially um, through the through the Ivanhoe Group, we came in um, in a joint venture with with uh, with Cordoba um, in acquiring this pro in, in in acquiring this project and 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 the Alacran deposit uh, in 2015. Um, the deal was done in 2014 and 2015 was sort of uh, in Colombia. It's a great area in terms of mining. It's got infrastructure. Um, Cerro Matoso, which is South 32's open pit nickel mine, is 20 kilometres away from us. Um, and so they've been operating for about 40 years. It means that the communities uh, know about open pit mining. They understand what it is um, and they support it. They know the benefits that come along with it. So we've got paved roads. We've got telecommunication towers. We've got uh, electricity grid there. We get about two and a half metres of rainfall per year. 
Um, so in terms of infrastructure, it's great. Um, and in terms of sort of social and, and, and communities there, it's also great because people actually support and want mining. And, and, and in addition to that, we've got uh, support from, from, the, from the local government officials all the way up to the top of the government. Great, great, okay. Uh, so you recently released a PFS for yeah. the San Matias project. Could you kind of go through the highlights of that? Sure. Um, it showed some pretty robust economics. So this project is is 102 million tons of. Um, we're at the moment we're at probable reserves. So it's not the biggest. It's not the biggest sized uh, deposit, but it's it's something as I mentioned previously. It's it's economical. It's viable and it's doable. And we announced a PFS in January of this year um, of an after tax MPV of 415 million dollars at a discount of. Uh, 8%, that's with an IRR of uh, 25% and a payback period of 2.2 years. Um, and that was using the long-term CIBC consensus pricing at the time of 360 for, for copper, 1650 for gold and around 21 for silver. Great, great, okay. Um, what op other op optimizations are you looking at as you move towards the feasibility study? Sure, here? so about a month ago, um, we kicked off our, our feasibility study. We announced this recently as well. We've um, we've actually got six drill rigs turning at the moment. We've got a huge drilling program going on, uh, 40 to 47,000 meters of, of infill drilling there. Um, our company's in interesting in the sense that um, we started our pre-feasibility study in December of 2019. And as we all know, the, uh, the world was shut down by March of 2020. So during a two year period, period, we only had access to site for nine months. The reason that we had we were stuck to sort of this time frame is in Colombia there are two permits required to build and operate a mine. The first one is called a, a plan of, of works which is effectively like a mine plan um, and that is about equivalent to the engineering studies required for a pre-feasibility study. So we simultaneously did both of these at the same time um, and so we had a hard deadline of November of last year to file that, that PTO. So during this Two year period, as I mentioned, we only had access for nine months and a lot of the studies and work we would typically do for PFS, we've had to pass over to the feasibility stage of the project. And hence our large infill drilling program of around 40,000 meters, 47,000 meters. Um, in addition to that, we'll be doing further MET testing and, and additional trade-off studies. So we do expect to see some good upside here. And I think one other important thing is we have a, a community right on top of where our pit's going to be. Um, and so the least amount of work we've done to date has been drilling on this ore body. Um, and so now we've actually, for the first time ever, got six drill rigs in there at the moment under this community. So we do expect to see some uplift in our gr the gold of our, our copper, gold and silver. Okay. Um, you touched on the permitting, but maybe you can just give us kind of the overview of that, uh, what it looks like for the project. Sure. So as I mentioned in Colombia, there are two permits required to build and operate a mine. The first is at PTO, so your mine plan. Um, and the second one required is the environmental impact assessment study. We've been doing that uh, now for probably about 18 months. And the level of studies required for that, it's, it's uh, over and above that of a feasibility study. In some cases, it goes all the way up to, to full detailed engineering design and what's needed for construction. Um, so the feasibility study that we're currently doing will support that EIA, and we're looking to, to file that with the Colombian government um, in the first half of next year. We also uh, have uh, ha expect to have an answer um, on our PTO, we uh, and, and that that will be approved within the next couple of months. Mm -hmm. So with those two permits, we're, we're good to build the mine. Great, okay. Um, so could you tell us about the timeline timeline to get to that feasibility study as well as a construction decision and then potential production. What does that look like? Sure. So um, as I mentioned, the feasibility study will be over the next 12 months um, and, and then we would be, so we would be announcing that um, and, and also filing the EIA within the next, um, within by, by, the, by the second quarter of next year. Um, and then following on from that, we will be making an, a sort of investment decision. We'll need to do detailed design. And we're hopefully, depending on the, the, the time that permitting takes, I think importantly to note here, we are a project of national interest for the Colombian government. Um, so we've got a, excellent government support and, and, and hopefully our permitting all goes rather smoothly. And we're looking at starting construction um, by the end of 2023, early 2024, depending on that timeline. And again, um, depending on permitting, uh, production by end of 2025, early 2026. Perfect. Well, thank you very much for joining us. Today. Thank you, Taylor.